Very often we find ourselves looking up at the night sky, wondering where the stars come from, why do they shine, and what makes them work. What exactly governs the functioning of cosmic structures at the scale of the universe? The tale of gravitation is a tale as old as time. It is one of intrigue and wonder, because it is gravity that at the scale of the cosmos governs the functioning of these cosmic structures. They dance at the whims and fancies of the law of gravitation, whose story we're just about to hear. The story begins all the way back when Copernicus had just started talking about the heliocentric model. As you must already know, it was the geocentric model that everyone was accepting before the heliocentric model came about. The geocentric model basically says that the Earth is the closest thing to a center that the universe has. But Copernicus came along and said that that was not true. He said that it is the Sun that is the center of our solar system. And of course, as we famously know, this was met with fury and anger. No one wanted to accept this new model because no one wanted to accept that the Earth was not extraordinary. It was just as ordinary as the other planets that were revolving around the Sun. But you can't beat science when it comes to data and measurements. So eventually science prevailed and how? The next scientist in the story was Tycho Brahe. Now, Tycho Brahe is what I like to call as the observer because he didn't really give any ideas or propose some new theories. In fact, he himself wanted to prove that the heliocentric model was wrong. And to do that, he set about doing his measurements meticulously. He took intricate observations of the night sky. And these observations were a multitude of them. And he did this even before the invention of the telescope. So it was basically him and his sextant. He used the most menial instruments to make a large, large number of observations of the night sky. And it is this observation that would set the course for the story of gravitation. Then came along the next scientist who would contribute to the tale of gravitation. And that was Johannes Kepler. Within a year of Kepler joining Tycho, Tycho died. But Kepler was determined to use the data that Tycho had gathered to interpret it and find out something meaningful. And data without someone to interpret it is basically useless. So Kepler came along and actually some would say stole Tycho's data and began to study it. And when he did that, he was finally able to rummage through the large number of observations and come to three wonderful conclusions, which we today call as Kepler's laws. Kepler's laws basically explained what was happening in the observations. Now, they didn't explain why these things were happening. They were just laws that fit perfectly in the model of the heliocentricity. They were laws that explained what we saw, but we still didn't know why anything happened. Between the joining of Kepler with Tycho and Kepler giving us the three laws was also another revolutionary event. Galileo Galilei invented the telescope. And why this was revolutionary was because the observations now made with the telescope would go on to provide evidence to help the heliocentric model, Kepler's laws, and so on and so forth. And finally comes the last, not the least, and arguably the most important piece in the story of gravitation. That is Newton, who came along and finally explained Kepler's laws. He not only explained Kepler's laws, but gave us the universal law of gravitation. And it is this universal law of gravitation that explains these wonderful cosmic structures even today. We were finally equipped to begin understanding this wonderful story of the cosmic dance of gravity. And now finally, in this tale of gravitation that we are about to set forth, 
I wanted you to hear the story of this age-old tale because sometimes amidst the formulae and the problems, we forget whose shoulders we stand on. These are the giants that gave us the formulae and concepts of gravitation that we are about to learn.